Hi, I'm Steve Zyskowski. I'm the founder of CirrusNet. Today, I have with me John Manwiller from Edward Jones. Uh, John is a financial advisor. He is relationship driven. Uh, the reason we've got John on the show is just uh, for so many things. Uh, first thing, he's been a CirrusNet member now for how many years, John? About three years now. About three years. Uh, after being a member for about uh, two and a half years or so, uh, John also started thinking about the possibility of facilitating his own team. Uh, John launched a team, his own team, with his wife Hannah uh, at the beginning of this year and already kind of in record time, they've got 12 members already. So he's, you know, really uh, the reason I've got John on the show is because I just think he's got a super awesome perspective and it's such a unique perspective that we can all learn. We can all learn from John's experience. So John, thank you very much for carving out some time uh, to be with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's it's a joy. Thank you. Thank you. So let's roll back in time a little bit. Uh, three, four years ago, I was running CirrusNet meetings in Brighton uh, physically uh, over at the Brighton uh, Lions Club. I'm running a Brighton Tuesday 8 o'clock meeting and my newest financial advisor on that group, John Condra, walks in that morning and you're with him. He said, hey, Steve, I'd like to introduce you to John. You know, he's new with Edward Jones. I'm kind of showing him things that I do uh, to be connected in the community. And you sat in on a meeting, got to see how it worked. And I thought to myself, this young guy's got it going on. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a you know honest person. Uh, seems like he's really going to be great at this. I didn't have any opportunities myself for you to be on any of my CirrusNet teams because I, I had a dedicated advisor already. But uh, the stars aligned. You were able to connect with Wendy Caverly. Uh, you've now been a two-time uh, most valuable refer MVP uh, on uh, the Howell team. And uh, so let's let's go back in time just a little bit uh, and let's talk about what were you, you know, what was it like actually joining a CirrusNet team? What was it like to try to build those relationships? How, what was your approach to all of that, John? Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess I could say that when I first started with Edward Jones, the, the main method that Edward Jones preaches for prospecting is door knocking and cold calling, right? And for me, having come straight from college to being a financial advisor, it's not like I had a, a big uh, book of contacts, a big uh, you know network to pull from. And so in my first year with Edward Jones, I knocked on over 10,000 doors around Brighton, just getting my name out, meeting people, handing out business cards. And, you know, it was, you, it was a little- you, Did you have to put your hand on ice? Uh, from any of that door knocking, I would assume your knuckles are probably a little red. Sometimes I would take a golf ball out with me and I would use that for the knocking too. Um, on like really cold days when I had gloves on. <laughs> but in any case, um, you know, it, it's grueling, right? You know, doing that many cold calls. Um, so I also wanted to leverage a, a, a warmer networking method where I could get to know people and build that trust, build those relationships. And so at the time I was working out of John Condra's office and he was really mentoring me. He had um, been mentoring me since I was in college and I owe a lot of my success to him. And he told me that he was part of this CirrusNet group and recommended that I come check it out. And so I remember that day, there was some kind of show and tell that was being done in group that day. And John brought me as his show and tell. And so that was my introduction to CirrusNet. And you're absolutely right there. You know, John was already the financial advisor in the team. And so um, he introduced me to Wendy and she was real welcoming. And uh, I, I really fit into a team with her. And I can tell you over the course of the first you know, couple months, I was getting these warmed up, ready to go referrals from other members who were building that trust with me and sending their loved ones or their friends or other connections my way. And I can tell you it's a lot easier to do business with somebody who's a warmed up, ready to go referral than somebody who's a, you know, a cold call door knock. <laughs> For sure. Plus, plus you don't have to worry about any dogs wanting to jump a fence and coming after you or anything. Like I've that. been bitten by dogs while door knocking. I sure have. Wow. I used to carry dog treats in my pocket just in case. Um, 
So, so you, uh, you're an entrepreneur because, you know, even, even though you're with a recognized company like Edward Jones, you're a business owner, really. You're in charge of your own book. Um, you have to build your own client base. And as a result of your hard work in building such great relationships, you've been able to grow your book. Um, you've met kind of the goals that you set with Edward Jones. And tell me about now, uh, the future of your your practice and what the exciting things that are happening for you today. Yeah, that's right. Every Edward Jones office is a little, it's a little bit of something like a franchise, right? Where each advisor, like you said, runs their own business, has their own book, and really has to start it on their own. And so there is that entrepreneurial side of it. And so um, I've been with Edward Jones now for several years, and I've gotten to build up a, a good sized book of business at this point where it's sustainable. And so Edward Jones has at this point said that I'm ready to start my own office with Edward Jones. Up until now, I've been working out of someone else's office. And so we're in the process now of building an office in Brighton, right at Spencer and Old 23 by Cheryl's place. And uh, we'll probably have that done in the next several months or so. And then I'll have my own office with Edward Jones and my own business. I'll get to hire my own assistant. And so there's there's certainly a lot to look forward to. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, it's like uh, it's wonderful seeing a dream come together for someone. So yeah, a really, a really cool thing happened. Uh, well, actually, let me let me just ask one other question before we talk about your, your transitioning to starting your own CirrusNet team. Yeah, uh, let's talk about how being connected, how having good referral partners has helped you uh, cement relationships potentially with clients uh, that you're serving and wanting to take care of for their financial advising needs. But as you get to know your clients, they become like friends and family to you as well. There's, you know, it becomes more of a trusting environment. And how are you able to leverage your network to better take care of your clients? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's true that that relationship goes a lot deeper than working with their finances. I have been to funerals for clients. I've had them at my wedding that we've, um, you know, gone to church together. There's there's just all kinds of things where our lives are being intertwined uh, and that, that friendship is going a lot deeper. Um, but as far as my network being leveraged for being able to help my clients, I can tell you that, you know, any day when I'm in a meeting with one of my clients, I'm talking not only about their financial needs, but also what else is going on in their life. And they may bring up something and say, you know, I'm paying way too much for my car insurance. And then I can point to my my little CirrusNet uh, Rolodex or my, my folder of business cards and say, hey, well, you should talk to somebody who you can uh, reach out to to uh, um, help you with whatever that need is. Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, the nice thing about that, too, is one of the things that I love about connecting people together is all the goodwill that it creates. I, I yeah. feel like for myself, uh, and, and I know that maybe I'm on the extreme case of it, but I really get jacked up uh, being able to see that I had an influence some way that helped a client beyond what they were expecting from me that allowed me to make a relationship deposit. Uh, into the referral bank of other people as well too because that's what I look at like referrals is doing it's like making you know we're talking about investing and you being a financial advisor when yeah. you look at referrals it's making investments in other relationships and right. then allowing those relationships to have time in the market yes. where you can start compounding and really you know being around to harvest the, the benefits of what you've done so you know, and it builds a lot more trust, I think, too, with the clients, knowing that you're not only taking care of their finances, but everything else, too. And, and then they come back and ask for more referrals down the road. And that's a really nice thing for you, because you want to be somebody that is helping a lot of people. But if your clients don't know how much you want to help them, they might not take you up on your offers. Like I always when I used to do mortgages, I would tell my clients don't ever, ever in a million years hesitate to reach out to me. A. I love hearing your voice when you call. I love my clients. Yes. B, I want to be helpful. So just know that on your behalf, I invest professional development time meeting businesses in the area. So if my clients ever have needs beyond what I can do, I've got probably got the right person to help you. And people remember that. They want to get the recommendation from somebody they already trust. Yeah. That's huge. Absolutely. Um, 
let's let's talk about one other quick question too, and that's what kind of advice would you have for somebody who's not everybody. I don't want to lead you on this, but there's an element of patience that comes from building relationships. Sometimes yes. people are so, they, they, they think they're going to join a group and just get showered with referrals. And for some people like Jimmy Plasky, who's one of one of my most favorite clients that I've had in SiriusNet for a long time. It took him like 16 months to get his first financial advisory referral. But really? so then it's been this gigantic snowball. Yeah, uh, but he had to uh, kind of go through the waiting game. What advice would you have for anybody that is joining a team that has never been involved in a referral group before? Like, if you had any advice you could give a person that was going to join like a SiriusNet team, what would be the number one piece of advice you'd give them? I suppose number one is there's no instant gratification, right? If that's what you're in this for, then it, it's the wrong place. It's it's all. Um, it's all the long game that we're playing. And the same thing is true whether you're doing a cold call, um, building a relationship, uh, doing a door knock, whatever it is, I can tell you from my door knocking experience, if I knock down a door, that person's not becoming a client today. They might not even become becoming a client for several years from now. And the same thing is true with networking. I'm building those relationships at the start with people who really don't know me and now they're building that trust with me they're getting to like working with me and eventually they'll feel comfortable sending those referrals to me and once i've gotten that in with them it's going to continue happening and maybe down the road i'm i move or i i move employers or i change jobs they're going to stay uh, a partner with me those people from that group for the rest of my life and they're going to continue sending referrals to, to me no matter what i'm doing so that's the first thing I would say. Secondly, what I did uh, personally is I took a look at what is the financial investment that I'm gonna make into being part of a team, right? And then I did the math and figured out how much business do I need to bring in in my first year in order to make it profitable. And I said to myself, this is really gonna be a 12 month commitment. I'm gonna spend at least a year with SiriusNet. And if I don't bring in an, you know, enough business from referrals, uh, to cover that cost, then I'll reevaluate and see if it's still worth it. And, you know, at the end of that first year, I, I did the math and found that I had brought in dramatically more business from referrals than, than what I put into as, as my initial investment uh, financially. And so that's the other thing too, is just figuring out what that break even is. That's great advice. That is really great advice. I love that it's pouring into people. It's playing the long game. It's not instant gratification. Not at all. And, and that's one of the things, like all of my new members, everybody, it's a 12-month commitment to get started. After the first year, all of my memberships renew month to month. And my average client's with me almost four years. So even though they're monthly, uh, they're, they don't, you know, it's part of, for the right people, this becomes part of their life. So yeah. let's switch gears. Uh, as we kind of wrap all this up, uh, you started your own SiriusNet team with your wife, Hannah. Yes. She got the Pip Squeak Boutique in, uh, in Fenton. So she's an entrepreneur like you. And how fortunate you guys both are to both be entrepreneurial. Because one thing that I've seen uh, is sometimes when you've got one person in a relationship who's the entrepreneur and the other person who holds the job down, uh, they, don't, they don't always see eye to eye on things they're not the same level of understanding as what it's like to be in business the the joys the struggles so you guys are a great fit because you have that synergy together so you and hannah run this group together i know you're the the figurehead facilitator for it why did you decide to start your own cirrus net team and in the early stages of it right now uh how do you feel it's going for you what are you excited about yeah, that's a great question. And I can tell you that being entrepreneurial and having our own businesses was something that actually kind of attracted us to each other in the in the beginning uh, that ended up leading to us starting a relationship and eventually getting married. And so there's a lot of history there that I could get into another time. But um, as far as what got us into wanting to do SiriusNet together, you know, like I said, I've been part of SiriusNet for the last um, three, or, three or so years. And um, at the end of each year, each team votes on who the most valuable referrer or MVP of the team was. And, you know, it's based off of who brought the most referrals and who came to the most meetings, brought the most guests, all that kind of stuff. And so I ended up winning the MVP for my team for two years in a row. 
And so I remember having a conversation with you, Steve, and you saying, you know, you really get CirrusNet and what we're here to do and um, sort of planted that seed to say, you know, it's something worth considering um, facilitating a team. And so it's something that I spent a lot of time talking and praying about with Hannah. And we realized that in my business, I know a lot of more of the business side of professions. Like I knew a lot of mortgage lenders and realtors and bankers and attorneys and CPAs and things like that. And then Hannah, she owns a children's clothing store and her network is filled with all kinds of, you know, massage therapists and photographers and uh, dance instructors and things like that. So our networks um, were, were separate, right? Like we, we wanted to combine them and bring them together because there's a lot of referring that those two sides of the business world can do with each other. And then for on top of that, a lot of my contacts were in Brighton. She grew up in Fenton, so a lot of her business, con that's where her business is with Pipsqueak. And so we realized, man, we could really create something to leverage both these networks and combine them. And man, we've had so much fun putting that together and, and it's been really amazing. Yeah, that is great. That is great to hear. And uh, uh, another question I would have for you too, do you feel like um, at least, you know, as you're getting started, did you, did you get the right support? Uh, you know, regarding feeling like you knew what to do and, and how to how to run the groups, how to do the meetings. Did you feel like, you know, things were laid out for you enough? Because I'm, you know, I'm the best practice partner to all the facilitators. And some of them, you know, they're like Doug Moffat, for example, uh, Steve Beber. They've been doing it now for so long. It's second nature to them. When, when I'm hanging out with them, we're just talking shop about different issues. Yeah. Um, it's a little different than when somebody's first getting started. So how, did you, how do you feel about the support and, and how you were able to get things done? I think the support was phenomenal. I know that you and I had a lot of conversations leading up to it, and you kind of held my hand through the whole process of getting it started. I also had a chance to get together with Doug Moffat in person, and he took time out of his business to sit down with me and give me a lot of uh, a lot of pointers and things to consider, and I really appreciated uh, his help as well. And so it really made the whole process of starting a team go real smoothly. Okay. Not to mention also the the uh, manual that you gave me to go through with all the resources there. And then also having been part of a Cirrus Net with uh, Wendy's great leadership in there um, for, for so many years, she, she helped a lot, um, you know, leading by example that way too. Okay. Well, John, I really appreciate that you took time out of your schedule to share with us. I love your journey. Can't wait to see how this thing continues to unfold. For you and Hannah, not just what you're doing with SiriusNet, but all these other wonderful things that you have to look forward to. And that comes from consistent, deliberate ways of being as a person, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For, for myself, I know that um, people pay attention to consistency. Uh, and when you are always giving people that same consistency, that trust that they build in you, becomes unbreakable. And that's that's what you've built. It's kind of an unbreakable network. John Manuel or Edward Jones on the rise. Thanks so much for your time today. We'll we'll catch back up with you in about a year, I think, and come back to this and see how the journey's been going. Sounds good. Thanks so much for your time, Steve. All right. Thank you, John.